In this video, I will try to present you with a molecular approach to the gas laws. See over here. Gas molecules are confined in a container. The three parameters, pressure, volume and temperature of a gas needs to be explained. The volume of the container is equal to the volume of the gas. See the gas molecules are colliding with the walls of the container. Pressure of the gas varies as the number of collisions with the container wall per unit area. Now let us see what happens to the molecules when temperature is increased. The molecules gain kinetic energy as a consequence of the kinetic theory of gases and the velocity of the random motion increase. Now let us see what happens when we increase the volume at constant temperature. The gas molecules will now occupy the whole of the container as we all know that gases do not have a boundary surface and assumes the shape of the container due to very weak intermolecular attraction. The temperature is constant, so is the random motion of the molecules. The number of collisions will also remain the same due to this reason. But the area has increased and so the pressure will fall. So as the volume increase, pressure will decrease. This is Boyle's law. Now let us see what happens when we increase temperature at constant pressure. The gas molecule random motion velocity will increase. So the number of collision against the wall will increase. The area also increase because the volume of the container has increased. So this ratio or in other words the pressure remain the same. So at constant pressure as the temperature increase the volume will also increase. This is Charles law. Now, according to Avogadro's law, volume of the gas is proportional to the number of moles when both pressure and temperature is kept constant. Now, combining these three laws, we get the ideal gas equation which is PV equal to nRT where R is the universal gas constant. These gas laws can be applied to gases as long as they remain as gas. Or in other words, the intermolecular attraction between the molecules is very weak. Let's see the effect of pressure. At high pressure, the volume is small and the volume of the molecules is no longer negligible compared to the total gas volume, as assumed in the kinetic theory. And the intermolecular attraction is no longer weak, or in other words, the gas laws do not hold good at high pressure. Now let's see the effect of temperature. At high temperatures, the random motion of the gas molecules is very fast. In that case, the intermolecular attractive forces become very weak. At low temperatures, the random motion velocity reduces considerably. So is the volume and the intermolecular attraction become pronounced. In other words, gas laws do not hold good at low temperature. Now the gases that follow the gas laws are called ideal gases. The gases deviate from this ideal behavior at low temperatures and high pressures. No gases are ideal at all pressures and temperatures. When gases do not follow the ideal gas laws like Boyle's law and Charles law, they are called real gases. The assumption made in the kinetic theory that the volume of the gas molecule is negligible when compared to the total gas volume does not hold good at high pressures. The available volume for one mole gas molecules is less by an amount B which is equal to almost four times the volume of one mole of gas molecule and is called the van der Waals constant for volume correction. Therefore, ideal volume equal to actual volume minus n into b where n is the number of moles. There are intermolecular interaction at low temperatures as well as high pressures. The molecules near the walls of the container face this intermolecular attractive force by the molecules just behind it. But the other molecules face interactive forces from all sides and the net effect becomes zero. The result is that the molecules that are positioned near the wall of the container is pulled back by the molecules just behind it and therefore the actual pressure is less than the ideal pressure. Where this is the pressure correction factor. Now what will be the correction factor? This will depend on the number of molecules striking the wall which is in turn dependent on the number of moles per unit volume, that is n by v. This will also depend on the number of molecules that are just behind and pulling the molecules that are striking the walls of the container. These molecules also depend on the number of moles per unit volume. Therefore the pressure correction is proportional to the square of the molar density n by v.
तो द प्रेशर करेक्शन इज गिवन बाय ए एन स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय वी स्क्वायर वेयर ए इज द प्रोपोर्शनलिटी कांस्टेंट नोन एज वैंडरवल्स कांस्टेंट फॉर प्रेशर करेक्शन सो द रियल गैस इक्वेशन इज लाइक दिस एंड इज कॉल्ड वैंडरवल्स गैस इक्वेशन नाउ लेट अस सी हाउ रियल गैसेस डेविएट फ्रॉम आइडियल बिहेवियर for this purpose we plot a curve of pv versus p at 0 degree centigrade for different gases ideally it should be a straight line like this but all the gases seem to deviate from the ideal behavior at very low pressure all the gases behave ideally you see that the deviation is mainly of two types hydrogen and helium show positive deviation all through the other gases show a negative deviation initially and reaches a minimum then it increases as we further raise the pressure after that above 400 atmosphere pressure all the gases seem to have positive deviation from ideal behavior now for simplicity the ordinate can be replaced by z equal to pv divided by rt which is the compressibility factor and should be equal to 1 in case of ideal gases now this is the van der waals equation for one mole of real gas now P is equal to R T by V minus B minus A by V square. That is P V equals R T V by V minus B minus A by V, or P V by R T. That is Z equal to V by V minus B minus A by R T V, or Z equals one by one minus B by V minus A by R T V. or z equals 1 minus b by v to the power of minus 1 minus a by r t v now we know that 1 minus x to the power minus 1 is expanded like this when x is much less than 1 neglecting the higher powers we get z equals 1 plus b by v minus a by r t v note that hydrogen and helium show positive deviation all through this is because the molecular interaction is minimum and these two gases cannot easily be liquefied so this factor does not matter too much at any pressure but this factor comes into play and become more and more as the pressure increases or in other words the volume reduces so more and more is the positive deviation and z is always more than 1 for gases where molecular interaction is more than hydrogen or helium what will happen at low pressure at low pressure the volume is high and this factor will not matter too much but this factor will come into play therefore the negative deviation and z will be less than 1 after reaching a minimum as the pressure is increased further this factor will also come into play and the curve will rise at this point both factor cancel each other's effect and the gas behave ideally that is z equal to 1 increasing more pressure the effect of this factor become more and more pronounced because of the low volume and there is a positive deviation thereafter now let us see the effect of temperature when we consider nitrogen gas curve at different temperatures the isotherms obtained are something of this sort at higher temperature the intermolecular attraction is negligible and so the curve represents that of hydrogen at low temperatures this factor come into play and at low pressures z is less than 1 as pressure increase volume decrease and this factor takes on charge and the curve rises just as carbon dioxide curve over here at an intermediate temperature the curve is like this see that z remain almost equal to 1 up to an appreciable pressure range this is called boil temperature this happen when these two factors are equal to each other in order that z remain equal to 1 putting t equal to tb the boil temperature we get tb equal to a divided by r into b 